Hi, welcome everybody. My name is Barry Rosen. I It's Saturday and Saturn requires you to start on time. So it's 1130 Central Time and we'll be starting. Um, thank you for coming. This is a first real class. Um, I, I don't do like a lot of teachers. I Sometimes I'll do like a 20 minute promo or, or something like that. This is actually the first real class to give you an idea of how I teach and to give you some knowledge. And if you continue on and want to take the course, which starts on October 14th now, um, you know, you, you, you know, this, you'll have this kind of background. Uh, so we will be learning all kinds of wonderful things today, um, particularly about the Atmacorica, and we'll be also learning some um, um, new, new material about, you know, why, we, you know, what this class is about. Um, I usually start, um, let me tell you a little bit about myself. Uh, most, some of you know me. Um, uh, here's my contact information. Um, uh, I've been in, I've been teaching Vedic astrology since, well, uh, since 2016. I've been teaching. I used to teach financial um, uh, astrology before that. Um, I've been involved in Vedic astrology since 1987, um, and been doing consultations since 1988 live. Um, I, uh, most of you know me from my, my, my Facebook blogs or, and I have, I have a YouTube channel that's got, um, um, uh, 52 tapes on it. Uh, I think it's called financial astrology by Barry Rosen or, uh, Vedic astrology classes by Barry Rosen is also on Facebook. Um, uh. I've written five books, um, including Finding Your Blind Spots Using Vedic Astrology, which is the one that I recommend the most, um, although I, I have written many others. Um, and uh, I, I'm actually, I'm a spiritual teacher also. I've been involved in yoga and meditation uh, and, and being a meditation teacher since I was age 21. That goes back to 1976. And I've been a, a spiritual teacher of um, many dimensions for many years and so I interweave uh, spiritual astrology um, into all, most of my work and I'm very passionate about um, Jaimini astrology. Uh, Jaimini astrology uh, for those of you who don't know um, is, is considered kind of a branch of Vedic astrology. Um, uh, Marishi Parashara um, uh, talked about a lot of the things that are in Jaimini astrology in his epic work and either his son or his devotee Maharishi Jaimini um, expounded on those in in um, in his own work um, and the interesting thing about Jaimini astrology is that it's a little bit more soul oriented um, and to me that's what this course is about you know why are we here uh, what is our life purpose um, what kind of karma do we need to work out in this lifetime? Um, and, you know, there are other things that we'll talk about in, in, you know, in that regard. Um, so I'm saying it's, I'm hearing that there are audio problems. Are, is anybody getting any audio problems? Um, I'm not. No, I can hear you fine. Okay, great. Okay. So I usually start with some, um, it's telling me to close some of my internet applications. Hold on. I don't have anything open. Okay, I usually start with some Vedic chanting to get the um, the history of Vedic astrology really goes back to the priest caste, and they used to recommend mantras and and do Vedic ceremonies after looking at people's charts in order to help them with their problems and ultimately that's still kind of the deepest aspect of Vedic astrology. So I always like to bring in the original energies. Um Ganesh of course is the god of Vedic astrology. Om Ganeshaya Namaha, Om Ganeshaya Namaha, Om Ganeshaya Namaha, Om Ganapatiya Namaha, Om Ganapatiya Namaha, Om Ganapatiya Namaha, Bhakritunda Mahakaya, Surya Koti Samaprapa, Nirigam Kurame Deva, Sarvakaresha Sarvada. Jyana Mulam Guru Murti, Puja Mulam Guru Padam, Mantra Mulam Guru Vakyam, Moksha Mulam Guru Kripa, Om 
Masatoma Sadgamaya, Tamasoma Jotir Gamaya, Mrichoma, Amritam Gamaya, Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. Lead us from ignorance to knowledge, from darkness to light, from death to immortality. So that's really the purpose of Vedic astrology is going from ignorance to knowledge. We'll talk about that. Sahana Bhavatu, Sahano Bunatu, Sahaviryam, Karva Bahai, Tejasvi Navatitamastu, Mahavivishai Bahai, Om Shanti Shanti Shanti, Om Aditya Samaye Mangale Buddhaye Cha, Guru Shukra Shanibis Cha, Rahaveke Devena Maha, Honoring the Great Ones, Lord Krishna, Radha Saraswati, uh, Veda Vyasa, in my spiritual tradition. Okay, and I have many Jyotish teachers to honor, particularly Sanjay Roth, Camilla Sutton, Bill Levesey. Um, okay, I want to get to today's material. Let me um, um, so this is an actual first class. So um, for those of you who decide to take the class. Um, and the title of the class is on Atmakarika. And the Atmakarika, if you've read my articles on it, is the planet with the highest number of degrees in your chart. And in Jaime astrology, that's the planet that governs your soul. And depending on where the Atmakarika is placed in your chart, where it is in the Navamsha chart, what planets are aspecting it, um, what houses it's in, what nakshatra it's in, it tells you something about your life purpose. Um, and it's quite fascinating. So that's kind of our goal today. Um, again, here's my contact information. Um, um, again, this talk is particularly, I'm particularly grateful to Robert Koch, Andrew Foss, Camilla Sutton, Sanjay Ruth, and Visti Larson. Okay, this is a copy of my book, which is on Amazon if you don't have it. Um, okay. Um, so just to tell you something really quickly about the class, um, it's going to run eight or nine weeks. It's, it's going to run live at this time, Saturdays at 1130 Central Time. It's going to start now October 14th after I finish off my um, Timing Major Life Events class the week before. And it'll probably go till December 9th or December 16th. So it's about eight or nine weeks. Uh, classes are always recorded. Now, topics for this course, again, are... are the Atmakarika, some of that we'll get today. Uh, there are charts then that you make out of where the Atmakarika is placed, and we'll learn how to make those and how to interpret those. And then, you know, the Navamsha chart also comes in here because it shows our inherited talents, and there are other techniques that kind of come up. Um, this is kind of a topic that I've specialized in over the last 10 years. It was, no one teaches it kind of the way I do, and I've been looking at everybody's chart um, in a special way. Um, you know, since, you know, over the last 10 years, and I, you, you interview people and you kind of really find out how the blocks to their, you know, what the blocks are to manifesting their life purpose and what they're, why they're here on this planet. Now, this is part of a new series that I'm doing. So this part is called Finding Your Life Purpose. Part two, which is advanced career topics, comes out of the continuation of the Secret of the Suns class that went on last spring. And then I have a personal finance, a Vedic Astrology and Personal Finance course. And I may start that on Thursdays, you know, you know, um, and I'll be letting people know about that. Um, I've taught it before. I have, I have a lot of new things to teach in it now. Um, now, the question is, why astrology and why life purpose? Um, now, most of us um, are a little bit unconscious. You know, we... You know, we have patterns around anger or fear and, and you know, we, our ego is, you know, which is connected to Mars, can be very slippery. It wants to be right. It wants to, um, it wants to try to try to be on top of other people. And there are kinds of, so most, most of the time we're unconscious about these patterns. And uh, a good astrologer should help your unconscious patterns become conscious so that we can transform them. And it's something I specialize in, which is kind of the psychological, spiritual dimension of Vedic astrology, is that we want to see our blind spots so that we can, um, can you know, change them to become a better person. As I often talk about in my books, it's kind of like the movie Groundhog Day, 
with Bill Murray came out in 1993. If you haven't seen it, watch it again. Um, where Bill Murray is this weather per, weatherman uh, for a Pittsburgh television station, and he's he's not a really a good person, and um, he ends up in this nightmare where he gets stuck um, in the same day, which is Groundhog Day, uh, filming this episode about um, a groundhog whether the groundhog's going to see his shadow and he has to relive this day maybe 40 times in the movie and uh, it's quite a fascinating movie it's kind of a spiritual movie about how many lifetimes we have to go through until we get it right by the end of the movie bill murray is good at relationship kind to people an example to to life and he's just kind of a transformed individual and then he wakes up out of the nightmare it's quite an amazing movie but i think for you know if you if you read an interview with the writer of that movie, you know, he, he, he was meant it to be like represent kind of 10 of our lifetimes. It's really, you know, that movie kind of maybe does about 40 lifetimes if you watch it, but it's quite, quite fascinating. So the question is, you know, how can we become a, a better person? Now, with life purpose, I think there are many dimensions. Um, namely, what karma do we need to complete here to achieve our purpose in this incarnation? And, you know, to me that's kind of the deepest you know why are we here are we is it to be a kinder husband or a better mother or control our anger more or to be a better child to our parent you know we all come in with you know assorted karma from many past lifetimes and we incarnate with certain family members and in certain situations so that we can do it right this time like bill murray um, and, you know, being aware of that and understanding that's something you can see in Jaimini astrology. And we'll talk a little bit about that today with the Atmakarika. Um, the second part of life purpose, is there some set profession or service job that I need to do to express my talent? So um, when planets are really strong in your chart, I think they, and there are certain places in the chart you can see inherited talent. Some people come in with an aptitude towards science. Some people come with an aptitude toward art. And usually when those planets are strong, particularly in the life purpose charts, um, you know, we have certain talents and we're, I always feel like if a planet is strong, it's why we're here. It's a gift that we give to others to serve others. It's a talent. When the planets are weak, you know, those, sometimes those talents don't get expressed. And sometimes those talents are blocked and we have to understand that. Um, now, another aspect that people often know what profession will allow us to earn the most income and that's a common question i get in a reading um i will cover that in the next course um, on personal finance and i have taught it before um it, that's often connected to the um the 11th house from the Uruta Lagna. it's not people think the 11th house in vedic astrology is connected to income it's not it's about groups and friends it doesn't have anything to do with money it may um really and and it's the 11th from the rural agna um the sign and the planets in there and the owner of that house that will show us um how we can make the most money based on what's going on in our chart and one of the blocks and that's something I, I would cover in another course um and ultimately why am i here on this planet and you know for all of us it's to discover our divinity and get enlightened you know and what's blocking that and that's to me the ultimate core question and some people uh, may not have gotten to that place in their life it's you know as a spiritual teacher it's something that i've um specialized in and you know i have a whole class on spiritual astrology and looking at those dimensions in people's charts um well, those are kind of aspects of of life purpose um and you know some of them will they were all unfold in the series that i'm doing on this um in every case we're here to uncover our our blocks and our blind spots and unconscious patterns so that we can consciously grow in this incarnation it's kind of like bill murray ultimately again we're here to be kinder and more loving people and to help others i mean it doesn't matter how much money you accumulate in this life can you take it with you you know that's that famous movie title, um, are you going to incur more good karma in this life so that you don't have to suffer in between lives? And and people are very unconscious. You know, if you're if you're not a good person, um, you know, there are astral rules that you end up where you're kind of punished. And that's, you know, we don't people aren't aware of it. And you know, you know, we think a lot of our political world and people are just kind of taking as much as they can and, and not really serving the people. And and you know, those people are 
you know, they and they don't have any inkling that, you know, they're not creating good karma. Um, but we all have to be aware that we're here to help others, to be kind to others, to do charity. Even when you don't have time, it's important to give to charities of your choice, even if you don't have a lot of money or to donate your time, because we're here to be good people and to incur good karma. And if we don't um, think that way and we get caught up in career advancement or making as much money as we can or, you know, or go caught up in our addictions, you know, we're just not living, you know, we're really going to keep re being the Bill Murray mode. And if you remember Groundhog Day, that movie, in the early lifetimes, he goes to the diner and he eats, you know, eight pies, you know, and, and or, you know, he becomes a glutton, you know, all these, it's a really, it's a really deep movie. <laughs> if you really, we should watch it again. It's really kind of reminds us. Now, the Albuquerque is the king of the chart. He's the guiding um, planet for the lessons of this incarnation. And he creates difficult lessons so we can learn how we're supposed to, what we're, what we're supposed to do in this lifetime. I mean, the Atmakarika is only interested in getting us enlightened. And um, he is connected to the first house, um, but he's also connected to the eighth house, which is the house of past lives. And and um, I've had a number of teachers who've taught Atmakarika, and, and you can use the Atmakarika to time periods of success and and you know because it is the first house but but um to me it's so much richer to kind of understand the atma quark in terms of the karmic lessons that it it's here to, to teach us so that we can grow and, and get enlightened and move beyond um the soul's um um karmic lessons and baggage um so there's kind of a there's kind of a suffering asset aspect to the atma because it's connected to the first and the eighth house is, and the eighth house is always is the eighth house is actually the most difficult house in this, in in the in the chart because it sometimes brings um, divorces and hospitalizations and and difficult karmas, uh, acute illnesses because it's bringing up deep karma that has to get worked out because we've messed up in the past. And there's an eighth house quality to the Amakorica, but it it it's kind of like the good angel. It's kind of guiding us. It's the it's like the good guardian angel. It's kind of guiding us to not mess up and to learn from the mistakes we've made in the past and to get it right this time. And so it will create in its dasha periods. It will create um, lessons that are what I call soul lessons. I should I have to remember to put a lesson in on timing up Makorka. So the up Makorka um, is um, um, you know, we like the Atmakarka, particularly if it's conjunct uh, and connected to the to the Lagna, because it means there can be great spiritual advancement in, for the native in this lifetime. Um, I, I find that the Atmakarka is just not talked about. To me, it's the most important thing to talk about in somebody's consultation, because it's, you know, why it's why we're here. And... Um, again, the Atmakarka is usually the planet with the highest number of degrees, um, and usually it'll be a planet at 28, 29, 27 degrees. Um, in in the Sanjay Roth system, the Atmakarka can be Rahu because Rahu goes backwards. So if you have Rahu from zero to three degrees, it may qualify as the Atmakarka. Um, so you know, but if Rahu were at 27 degrees, it wouldn't. Be the Atmakarika. So that we'll learn the basics of Jaimi astrology in the class. Uh, we have tapes on it that you can watch when you, I'll give them to you when you sign up. Um, so the Atmakarika gives us the soul's purpose for this incarnation. We can rotate the whole chart around the Atmakarika and make it the Lagna and read the chart from it. Um, and that's often ignored too. I mean, we can read the Rashi chart from the Atmakarika. Um, and you know it's very it's very intriguing. Now my chart, um, which I, I share my chart because at least I can I can always get it right. I use South Indian lately because I can see the Jaimini aspects better. I do for those of you who need North Indian, I I can put those charts up in class for you. But um, so I'm Scorpio rising, um, which is ruled by Mars and K2. In my chart, Mars is stronger in Aries. Um, the yeah, Atmakorica, the planet with the highest number of degrees, is Saturn at 27 degrees and 45 minutes. 
in, in the sign of Libra, it's exalted. Um, and Jupiter um, has almost an exact aspect to it. Jupiter is the Machakarka, of the planet with the second highest number of degrees is often connected to career and income. And, and again, it's interesting, my Machakarka is Jupiter connected to teaching. And I'm always in Jupiter's conjunct K2 for either teaching Jyotish or teaching spiritual spirituality or teaching meditation. So that's kind of interesting. And that's that Jupiter is exactly trining my Machakarka and that's significant because it's between the eighth and the 12th houses. But if we rotate the whole chart around the Atmacorica, Saturn, we have a different chart. I'm Libra rising, which is very Libra rising, if you know me in some ways. Um, and I've got Jupiter in the ninth for being a spiritual teacher and a guru. So, um, and those are very true things. But you see, um, if you rotate the chart around the Atmacorica, even the, the Rashi chart, you get information. And then we can also do this in the Navamsha chart. And we get a chart called the Car Compton Devumpsha chart. And so um, Saturn is in the last pada of Libra, which is Gemini Devumpsha. So the Atma Quark, uh, the first house in the in, in the Car Compton Devumpsha chart, which I call the the I, I have to translate the, these terms put people off. And so Car uh, Compton Devumpsha chart really is it's a chart of our soul's desires and the talents that our soul wants to learn in this lifetime in this case i say so i've got three planets in gemini saturn rahu and venus and then we look at the trinal houses we'll talk about that in a little bit um so we can also look at the chart from the navamsha chart and then and then there's a chart that integrates um the rashi chart and the navamsha chart it's called the car Navamsha chart, which is how we manifest the soul's purpose in this lifetime. And this chart often will tell us about our our soul's purpose. Um, and um, in this case, I'm Gemini rising with Jupiter and K2 in the first, and the Lord of the chart, Gemini in the ninth house. And this, when, we, when I when I analyze this, I say, oh my God, spiritual teacher, teacher of Jyotish, teacher, you know, writer of books you know, uh, spiritual writer, you know, all those things that have happened for me, you know, they're, they're right there in this chart. They're not really there in the Scorpio chart. Um, but, but the point is, is that um, we tend to kind of realize that, you know, we're not just our, our, our Rashi chart or our natal chart. You know, there are so many charts in Vedic astrology, and if we don't look at them and slice them up, we miss other dimensions of our soul. I, I like to use the analogy that we're kind of like a multi-dimensional chessboard. And when I look, uh, one of the things that I do when I analyze people's charts is I often look at the connection between all these charts and how they relate to see if the soul can achieve its purpose. Um, okay, interesting, okay. So um, now the Atmakarka gives us motivation to stay alive. Um, if we look at planets, six and eighth from the Atmakarka in the rotated chart, even in the Rashi chart, they show us our debts to the world, um, particularly um, um, the, the, planet, the planet sixth um, from the Atmakarka in the Rashi chart will tell us that I've got the sun there. And in some ways, you know, um, in some ways I'm very successful at work in certain ways. In other ways, I, you know, it's, it has been a, a big pain in my life. Um, and learning lessons around work are very key in my life. Um, you know, planets in the fifth and the ninth from the Atmakark and the Rashi chart um, can bring judgment. Um, we don't. We generally don't like to have malefics fifth in the. Put it this way: we don't like to have malefics fifth and the ninth from the Atmakarka in your chart. I don't have any luckily, um, but but they tend to bring problems. Um, Mars fifth from the Atmakarka brings too much conflict and fighting. Saturn brings living in the past. K2 is headless and has trouble um, get moving forward so nothing happens. And Rahu is so obsessed and does not see problems clearly and dreams about. So one of the important things to do when you're analyzing a chore for those who are con astrologers is to look at the fifth and the ninth from the Atmakarka and the Rashi chart to see if they're malefics. Again, what happens is we just we forget the chart is multidimensional, and if we only look at it one way, we miss so many hidden things in the chart. Um, I like to look at the Atmakarika as a twisted karika. Karika means signifier, 
Atmakarka is the signifier of the soul. But I, I, I like to think that the Atmakarka is a twisted karka because um, it, it, it gives problems connected to the karka in a twisted way. So, um, and again, the condition of the Atmakarka can vary. It can be, if it's, if it's debilitated, it's a problem. If it's exalted, it has less problems and fewer blind spots. If it has a lot of benefics connected to it, it can see its mission better and get there. If it if it has Rahu, you know, or K2 connected to it, it may be too foggy to see what the hell's going on and why it's here. Uh, now, Maya Makarka um, is Saturn. Um, and as a twisted out Makarka, now Saturn governs workers and work. And, um, you know, on the 612 access, it's very connected to employees. So my biggest lifelong lesson that I've dealt with for 30 years is, is employee relationships. I mean, um, I've had, you know, in 30 years of having people work for me in my financial business, you know, I have two or three memorable people that I can say I didn't have major problems with it, but I've had just had a whole slew of really difficult people, including people who would take money and people that would, um, you know, just not show up or just be, you know, and it's all, you know, so I have these lessons. Um, my Atmaparka is, is about um, employee relationships and learning to treat employees better and, and not being unconscious about the way I treat employees. And, you know, I, I you know, I always tell people the Atmaparka it's kind of a lifelong journey because you know it you know the problems of the amakarka are, are there you know i'm 68 and i'm still dealing with them i'm, I'm more aware of them and i I've, i'm learning to do a better job with them but um it, it's it's kind of a continual battle sometimes um now there are different um planets owning the amakarka so if your son is the amakarka um it means that we need to you need to learn humility and overcoming um, self-importance. So the sun likes to shine. It likes it's it you know it naturally is a planet of ego, uh, one level of ego. It likes to be in power. And depending on you know you you know if we look at politicians with sun up Macorica, they're often tyrants. Um, and the goal of the sun up Macorica is to learn humility and um, to be more of a team player and not and to give up one's quest for being in the limelight. And this is often just a life, a life lesson. And I, I have a friend um, who has son Atmakorica and it's exalted in Aries. And the guy's like a king. Um, he's a Leo rising with son exalted in the ninth, you know, and it's in the end of the sign, which is very powerful. Um, and, you know, he, 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 he sends out so many solar flares with his ego that it's impossible to be in relationship with him, and and he burns people up. He worked for for me at one point in my in his in, of my time here, and um, you know he's one of the few people I fired because um, he was just so strong, um, and you know he didn't really have any idea how he showed up or or how to be humble, you know, because because we're blind sometimes to that level of ego, um, you know. Again, the avocar can can be strong or it can be afflicted um if the sun at Macorica is afflicted like in libra um, it may have really serious issues it will have father issues again it's a twisted karka so sun is the karka or the significator for father Sun people with sun at Macorica inevitably have father issues how bad those father issues are dependent on how afflicted the sun is but in, ultimately if we have father issues we have problems with bosses and we have problems with government and and you know all those things kind of manifest um but it, it's the question of learning self-importance and self grant uh learning to be humble rather than be self-important and self-aggrandizement people sometimes with libra sun um they, they they have such low self-esteem that they they overcompensate the other way uh, moon out is quite interesting I gotta, sorry barry can i ask you a quick question yeah. 
Um, now, look at that out of a car because then you were talking about like um, employee, like boss employee relationships. Do you ever, you know, think um, when you're hiring someone, do you ever look at their art Makarka to see like, is this someone that would be a good fit for you? I I used to, <laughs> I, mean, I used to look at employee charts. I mean, I used to just, you know, because I'm an astrologer and, you, I, you know, people want jobs, so they're willing to give you your chart information. And I, I, I usually would, um, you know, I, I never would look get get to know them deep deep deeply enough in an inter interview of their chart to, to to you know sometimes I I would see that, that they were a disaster by looking at their chart you know and if I was hiring you know looking at poor candidates you know I might quick I might roll one out because of their chart but I would still end up hiring people that um, I I would have problems with just because it's it's my blind spot. Okay, but should, should you, should, I mean, if if you were to hire some, like if, for instance, if I'm looking to hire someone, do you think that looking at their Art Makarico would be a good idea? Because I know when I look at um, people that John hires, I and mean, there's a few things that I look like, I look at, but I never bothered to look at their Art Makarico, which now I'm kind of reconsidering. <laughs> the Art Makarico is their, you know, can be their deepest problem. I mean, like if you hire somebody with a weak son at Makarka, they're going to be an ego power problem, you know? Yeah, yeah. It, it, the thing is, the at Makarka is the most important planet in the chart because it's the planet that really causes the most problems and it's, it causes the, the most weaknesses in, in their chart. So that's, that's why it's kind of interesting. All right. Thanks, okay. Barry. Good question. Okay. So moon at Makarka, um, again, the moon is about, what is the moon's signification of happiness, compassion, love? sometimes uh, female mother and things like that. So um, if you have moon at Makorica, then you need to learn lessons around compassion and being sensitive to others. You, you find that happiness is very fleeting because the moon is changing signs every two and a half days. There's a continual, you know, the moon governs the mind. So there's a continual search for peace of mind. You know, moon at Makorica particularly has to take up meditation um, in spiritual practice to quiet the mind. Um, there's a constant search for happiness in domestic life and relationship, you know, um, and there may be issues with mother. I mean, moon is the karka for mother. The twisted uh, uh, moon is has major issues with mother that they have to work on. Um, and again, how strong the moon is will impact how we judge the atma karka is, uh, again, what lunar day is the, we had a whole course on secrets of the moon. What day is the moon? What, what lunar day are you born on? Is it a waxing or waning moon? What planets, what signs it's in? So we can, we can again, there's microscopic information about the Apocorica, which we have to learn to kind of diagnose. Uh, moon Apocorica may have a weakness for married women and get into affairs. They have unstable emotions that run their lives, particularly if it's afflicted. They have problems with home and family life. Um, Mars Apocorica, now, Many Buddhists have Mars at Makorka because they they have to learn how to be nonviolent. So what is Mars nature? As a Karka, it's to fight and to be aggressive. And so if you have Mars at Makorka, if it's if it's afflicted, you have to learn how to be nonviolent in speech and action and be humble and accept defeat. And that's hard for a, a, a warrior person because you know again the Apocorica is the strongest planet in the chore. It's stronger than the ascendant and it governs your soul's nature. And if your soul's nature is to fight, um, um, and you have Mars at Macorica and you have to learn how to be harmonious and accept defeat and be humble, you know, it's it's a it's a it's a constant continual battle. Because Mar you know, Mars is a fire planet, and so it has to take that energy and harness it. You know, the highest aspect of Mars is service. He's the warrior, he serves the king. If you have Mars at Makorica, you have to channel that energy into service to help mankind. Uh, afflicted Mars at Makorica can give laziness and negative thinking and weakness of the nerves and lack of energy and physical strength. So again, Mars governs the adrenals. If you have an afflicted Mars, you may just have trouble getting out of bed or finding the energy to, to move forward. Again, the at Makorica kind of forces, you know, it's forcing your soul to grow. Um, Mercury at Makorica, has to learn how to speak the truth. Now, Mercury is the significator for what? Friendship and communication and speaking. So if you have Mercury at Makorica, you have to learn how to speak the truth and communicate it in an uplifting way and to avoid gossiping. So uh, people with Mercury at Makorica, you know, may uh, 
you know, have lessons about speaking ill of others. And if you do that, you take on other people's karma. I used I knew this lady and she, um, anybody you brought up, she would talk about all their bad qualities and what a bad person they were. I mean, it's horrible karma to take on because when you speak ill of others, it's like two finger, you point two fingers at somebody else, three fingers point back at you. So the thing is, you never want to speak ill of others. And you have Mercury out in Macorica, you particularly have to learn how to avoid gossiping and speaking ill of others. And you have to speak the truth. Um, and often Mercury is the Karaka for friends and um, relatives. And you often find that people with Mercury out in Macorica have problems with friends. They lose friends a lot. I had a, I had a, lit, a client who had Mercury out Macarca in the 12th and she, um, she was very, uh, she, she, she was always blowing up every, every friendship that she had. I mean, in a big way. And she was unconscious how she showed up and her karma was to learn how to be a better friend. And being a better friend means what? Learning to listen. <laughs> learning to be there for your friend and not put your ego in front of your friendship, you know, um, and, and so it, it's very important, um, you know, Mercury Mer Macarca, sometimes I send them to Toastmasters or I send them to Dale Carnegie, How to Win Friends and Influence People, because they don't have basic people skills. Um, when Mercury out Macarca is very afflicted, um, you may act like a child. Again, Mercury is the prince. It's it's kind of immature. It may be sexually overactive. That's a problem with Mercury out Macarca. Um, it may be prone to gossip, and it has to watch its speech and how to be a good friend. Now, Jupiter out Macarca is considered one of the better ones, but um, but basically, again, it's like a twisted Karaka. So if you have Jupiter out Macarca. You have to learn how to protect children. Again, Jupiter is the Karaka for children. You have to learn how to be a good teacher and a good parent. Um, you may lack confidence being a teacher, and so you have to learn to trust your abilities. Now, my my wife has Jupiter at Macarica. She's the most incredible teacher, but she doesn't do it. She somehow lacks confidence. So again, with the Macarica, sometimes you have to do the things that you don't want to do because it, it's forcing your soul to grow to be to learn the lessons that it didn't learn in past lives. Uh, Jupiter at Macarica may have problems with husbands and gurus. In other words, Jupiter is the Karaka for husbands. So Jupiter at Macarica may have major lessons about um, husbands or teachers, and they have to learn how to be humble and not be a, a know-it-all. Um, again, if Jupiter at Macarica is very afflicted, uh, one may be prone to wrong judgment, lacking faith, Jupiter's planet of judgment, so you may have bad judgment with Jupiter at Macorica. Um, you may be naive in judgment. You know, you may believe people in a naive way if it's afflicted and things like that. Um, you have to learn to listen, and develop faith and tolerance. Venus at Macorica, um has to learn control of physical passions and excessive sensual experience. Again, Venus governs the senses. It governs women and um, sexuality and marriage. Uh, if you're a man with Venus at Macorica, you have to learn to, you know, to, to be devoted to your wife and, and to go and to, and to be in control of your passions. And, you know, that could even be overeating, you know, if you have Venus at Macorica, it may be, you know, something like that. Um, you know, men have to learn how to curb their sexual energies. Um, you, 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 I often find with Venus at Macorica is people have multiple marriages, you know, if you have Venus at Macorica, it means that you learn, you need to learn how to be a good partner in marriage and not to just give up on marriage and change partners all the time when it doesn't work. So um, it's very key to um, lesson to learn. Um, quick Venus question, quick yeah. question, Barry. Did, um, you know, speaking of multiple marriages, did, uh, what's her name, Elizabeth Taylor, did she have a Venus Carica? Do you remember? Uh, I don't remember. Uh, we can look it up. Um, yeah, uh, yeah. Um, I think she probably does. Let me see. And then the other comment that I want to make, it's funny because I have I have uh, Mercury at uh, Makarika and my Mercury is in Gandanta and Cancer. And when I was in my Mercury Mahadasha cycle, holy cow, my family <laughs> used to not like talking to me because not that I gossip, but I was so frank and honest. <laughs> 
Yeah, the other side of it, they were like, they felt like I was cutting them with my words and I wasn't even trying to hurt them. <laughs> it was, it was, I mean, there was a lot of benefits and I had a lot of friends during that time. Okay. But it was not so, good for being, uh, for being so honest. So, so anyway, so the way it works in Elizabeth Taylor's chart, she's got um, um, Rahu Atmakarika conjunct Venus. So the uh, Rahu, of course, takes on the planet of the the energies of the planet next to it um and one of the rules about atmakarika analysis is what planet is the planet conjunct so rahu a rahu venus atmakarika is in, in the fifth house is obsessive about romance right so, oh, um, so this house is romance so she's a romance addict and romance addict is going to have a lot of marriages but in particular it's you know venus the planet of relationship for her because it scorpio rising it governs the seventh house so she is it, you do see romance addiction and marriage addiction and and because of the conjunction it does create um uh, that kind of problem okay good good question uh rahu amakarika that brings us to rahu amakarika is um uh, really kind of one of the most interesting ones um it has to do with uh suffering suffering by deception of others and often uh, finds oneself cheated and betrayed, and uh, and it has to learn how to be honest and straightforward. So, I, when I've done Rahu at Macorca people, they sometimes have have been cheated in business. Um, Elizabeth Taylor there with Rahu at Macorca, her first husband betrayed her, um, and I don't. I, I, she probably had a number of husbands that betrayed her. I you know I, I don't. I haven't. Yeah, she was married like so many times, five to seven times. Something yeah, like how that. many of them had affairs on her? But you see, so for yeah. her. You know the deceptions that she had to suffer were connected to betrayals um, in in marriages and, and and things like that. But that's that's the lesson of Rahu Atmakarika. It often has to. Um, it, sometimes Rahu Atmakarika can be too ambitious and and ethical. So um, if you have Rahu Atmakarika, you have to learn how to be ethical, to curb your ambition, and to you know live with the betrayals and and deceptions that happen to you and it's, it's a very hard one to deal with now saturn at mccork is when i have saturn is the carca for suffering and pain and sorrow right and if you have saturn at mccork in your chart you need to share the sorrows of many others and support them so as a vedic astrologer i'm almost taking on other people's suffering you know by talking to them and being compassionate and um and that's one way that i'm working out my saturn at mccork energies um you know, in past incarnations, maybe you violated the freedoms of others and suffered, and now you must help others through their suffering. So that's what I do professionally, is I help people through their suffering. Now, um, here's Aaron, a case. Yeah. I have a question. Do you also look at the at Makarika for nation um, as well? Because U.S. has a Saturn at Makarika as well. You can. Um, you're not. You're not supposed to use eight with, with um, countries. You're not supposed to use um, the eight system. So you, there's no Rahu Atmakarika ever for a, a nation. Um, but you can definitely look at the Atmakarika, the soul of a nation, by looking at at it. Yeah. Very interesting question. I have heard talks on that. I have not specialized in it, but it's it's kind of a fascinating thing to to look at. So um, here's a case study of Elizabeth Kubler Ross. Uh, I don't know if you know Elizabeth Kubler Ross. She's she's kind of a here's her chart in both North and South systems. Elizabeth Kubler Ross um, wrote a number of wrote a very famous book called On Death and Dying. She specialized in interviewing people who had died on the deathbed in, during op surgeries or accidents, and then came back to life. And then she she saw in interviewing them that they all had very similar experiences. They would see light at the end of the tunnel. They would be shown all their past lives. Uh, all the, they had been, you know, the most beautiful thing. I, it was a very memorable tape I heard of an interview. A woman died and on the operating table, and she was shown. Um, her, she had this past life review, but she was only shown the times that she had been kind and loving to others. And she had forgotten one time she had been at day camp, uh, overnight camp, and she had volunteered to stay with a handicapped woman instead of going on a, on a canoe trip. 
and um, you know to to be loving and to take care of this woman during you know, well, so the woman, you know, wouldn't be alone. And um, um, and she was shown that in her past life review. So again, it's a reminder of why we're here. We're here to give love and kindness. And, you know, people in their past life reviews aren't shown how much money they made or how many job promotions they got. It's how good a person were they, you know? So Lydia's Puvrilas did pi very pioneering work on this. Um, and uh, she helped refugees during World War II. Um, and now what's really interesting, um, she's ruled by Saturn. She's a um, uh, she's Aquarius rising. She's got Jupiter in the first. She's got Saturn almost at the same degree I do um, at 26 degrees Libra, and it's, it's retrograde. So it's almost like she's had to. She and I have very similar karmas. We've taken on the uh, with Jupiter aspecting Saturn here. She's um, she's kind of taken on the suffering of others and helping them with death and dying. She's written numerous books. Very, very, very amazing woman. Um, definitely worth picking up her books if you don't know them. Um, so, okay, Saturn at Macarca is the is a is the plan of hard work. Saturn at Macarca period often have to work very hard, um, and um, and they need to endure sadness and pain and loneliness often in working very hard. Now. Um, Saturn at Macorica can also be connected to health issues. Uh, Saturn at Macorica may have to endure their share of challenges around health. Health, um, you know, it's really um, Saturn at Macorica. We'll look at Bill Walton and Lucille Ball. They also had they also had Saturn at Macorica. Let's look at Lucille Ball's chart. Um, she's no, no, she's very. She has a fascinating chart. Again, we all we all love Lucy, and and you know she's amazing. Sag rising again, you know again with Jupiter in Libra. She was she started out as a singer and an entertainer in in New York nightclubs and things like that, and went on to marry um, uh, Desi Arnaz, who who was a Cuban guitar player, and and. Um, but they put together this amazing television show, which is, you know, number one in history. I love Lucy. All of you know the show. I love Lucy. Um, you know, but when they've done a number of biopics on her recently, and you know, she, you know, as she, as an amazing woman as she was, it's not like she had a really easy life. I mean, notice how she has Saturn at Macorica in Aries in the fifth house with Mars and Rahu. Now Mars has dignity. Uh, Rahu, you know, amplifies. She's got three malefics in the fifth house. Now, her son and daughter, I think, you know, again, the, the fifth house would be her son for a woman. The ninth house was her daughter, and her fifth house was her son. Her son did have addiction problems later in life, and she suffered a lot with his addiction problems. But, you know, she was an incredible hard, hard worker. They they used to rehearse these television shows forever, and they, they were produced live, and, you know, the no one did live television. I don't know why they did live television, but all those I Love Lucy shows were were produced live um, in front of a live television audience. And she had, she had to work incredibly hard to get all the rehearsals perfect so they could go on live like you know you would do in live theater. Um, that's the quality of Saturn Out Corica. Um, but again, she was very successful. She had we, we in the astrology, we like the uh, Corica conjunct the uh, Amacha Corica. Again, the hard work from Mars and all the energy that she had did bring her a lot of success, but a lot of suffering. She eventually had a lot of suffering in romance. Um, she divorced her husband um, in the late 50s or early, I think in the late 50s. Um, they went on still to create this amazing television empire, Desi Lu Productions, producing shows like Gomer Pyle and Andy of Mayberry and all these incredible, you know, it's a hallmark of 60s television if you grew up in that time period and and very 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 successful um, not an easy chart but again we if we analyze this chart on different levels we'll see you know when you look at this chart you initially see it's kind of a mess but but you know if you rotate the chart in different ways you find out you know amazing amazing person amazing chart um um now, the other thing you can say about Atmakarka is that the houses that that the Atmakarka owns will also have deep karma. So one of the things when we look at Atmakarka, um, 
we look at I'll, I'll give you a cookbook for this you know you look at what house the Atmakarka is in what nakshatra it's in what house it is in the navamsha chart what planets are conjunct and aspecting in what house is it is it does it own so in my chart i have saturn go owns the third and the fourth houses and i have a parivartana yoga between saturn and venus in the third and the fourth house my, my younger brother uh had a major accident and moved to uh, when he was in israel and lost his legs um he received veteran benefits but it was um and that's actually shown in, in my chart even but um the center at macarca because it's connected to the third house suggests that i have major karmic issues with my younger brother which is true i didn't talk to him for 20 years despite his injury and accidents um we had very deep karma to work out we I eventually did work it out um and we're very close now i went to visit him in israel recently but um uh you know the amakorka lessons are are very deep and um it turns out that my younger brother had killed me in a past life and when we were both soldiers and i wasn't about to for to to let him in my life again very easily even though he incarnated into my family so that we could um so he could get some forgiveness from me which he worked on his whole life and i eventually let him in um, um saturn also owns the fourth house which is property um and homes and i've i I've been very lucky with with real estate. I have a Jupiter aspect onto my fourth, yet I have I had all kinds of incredibly difficult karma with property and property ownership, which I don't really want to go into. But again, the Avakarka brings deep suffering uh, around karka issues um, or the houses that it owns. Um, now, in the Rashi chart, um, the 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 sign that the atmakarka is in um and, and the dignity that the atmakarka have will also reveal some of the the soul's lesson uh soul's lessons if the atmakarka is in the seventh house it means the person has major in the right even in the rashi chart the person has major soul issues around relationship to work out if it's in the tenth house you may have major soul issues of, around career to work out and these are deep issues the atmakarka issues kind of go on your whole life um they may show up more in the doshas of the atmakarka but they're very very deep lessons um now jyotish is always microscopic so every every degree in a chart every placement in a varga chart every yoga that the atmakarka is involved in every pada of uh you know of the navamsha chart the atmakarkas and we'll tell something about the atmakarka so what we do in this course is is that we learn how to analyze every because the atmakarka is so important um because it, it really governs so much of the soul's purpose on this planet uh we we can analyze we have to analyze the sign it's in the house that it's in the houses that it owns the yogas that it's involved in the aspects to it the placements in the D9 chart and the Varga chart. So if you have wherever the Atmakorka is in the, in, if it's in a difficult house in a Varga chart, let's say in the D10 chart, if you have Saturn in the 12th house, so you have Saturn Atmakorka and you have Saturn in the D10 12th house in the, in the Atmakorka chart, it may reinforce all your serious lessons about frustration and work and career and achieving status. So again we're so you can we can analyze the apocorica and the varga charts and if it's afflicted in the varga charts and poorly placed it's going to re-emphasize that those areas of your life are going to be be in trouble we can also look at the what nakshatra the apocorica is in and it turns out we have a whole lesson on this i may throw it in um the deities um you know the, the nakshatras have a mythology you know um so my my um, um you know jeshta which is connected to indra um um he's the king of the gods and there's a whole story of indra about you know his infidelities and he was afflicted um because because he was infidel so if you have if you have a if you have your atmakarika and jeshta you may have life lessons about infidelity that you have to learn so it's very interesting of the mythology you know 
um, of of the Atmakorika Nakshatra deity will tell you about your own soul's journey, and that's quite a fascinating thing. It's um, I um, we almost need a whole course to do that, and it's quite interesting. So, how do we analyze the Atmakorika? Um, first of all, analyze it in the Rashi chart. What are the strengths and its weakness? Is the ride comfortable or difficult? Now, um, I have an exalted Atmakorika, um, and uh, it's it's not like I, I you know in some ways people look if, if I look back at my life I had a lot of incredibly difficult deep suffering particularly early in life Saturn again matures at 36 um, and you know maybe I finally started feeling like I had some success or I was on the planet you know you know after Saturn matured but um, um, Saturn um, the fact because I have an exalted um, Saturn at Macorica, um, this is, you know, it, it, um, it, it's very interested in, again, the Albuquerque is only interested in getting enlightenment and the Saturn's in the house of enlightenment. And, you know, I specialize in the astrology of enlightenment. It's, you know, since I was 18, it was the only thing I was interested in. And because Saturn is exalted and aspected by Jupiter, it's something that, um, and there are other things in my chart that indicate that I have a chance for that to happen in this lifetime. I've been very blessed lately with guidance in that realm uh, but i have met people with saturn out macorica in aries and um they can barely get out of bed they are too lazy to work and they're um you know they're suffering deeply because they can't make any money because they're too lazy to get out and they can't find any work so you can see that the dignity of the atmakorica will tell you something about it i'm a workaholic i work 70 hours a week and i don't think anything of it and that's one of the problems with saturn atmakorica is it's, it's it's a workaholic in, in my case but you know better than to have it in areas where you're just too lazy to get out of bed and you suffer because you, no one hires you you know you can so you can see there's so many different ways the vedic astrology you know we can overcome we like the atmakorika to be vargotama which means you know vargota means saint rashi and Vamsha are in the same signs because then it gets the blessings of shiva and vishnu to overcome its difficulties um Um, she, Elizabeth Cooper Ross again, and she and I both share a lot of similar qualities. Oh, let's see, she's. Uh, I, well, I'm gonna. We'll do this in the course because I, I don't want to get too detailed here. But um, but anyway, there's this whole you know analyzing out Macorica, like everything in Vedic astrology has this all this microscopic information. Um, here's Elizabeth Cooper Ross again. Um, her out Macorica is in Gemini and Avamsha. She also did. Um, I didn't bring the Novamsha chart up here. Let's see if I can do that quickly. Okay, here's Elizabeth Cooper Ross. Now, again, she's because her Amakorica is in the last pada of Libra, it's in Gemini Navamsha. So her her life her her she becomes her her talent desire talent chart has put Saturn and Venus like mine in Gemini. Uh, the ruler Mercury is in the seventh house. It's a little bit different than my chart. Um and and she did write these incredible books. So uh, one of the things that we'll learn is that the the, the sign of the Atmakarkin's Devamcha chart um, may show you qualities of the person's life purpose. So um, you know, when we look at my, I, I never I never really thought I was going to be a writer, and I struggled through college rhetoric, and you know, and then now I've written five books, and I and, and stuff rolls off my pen. Um, 
like with automatic writing, but but in a sense, you know, my soul desired with the Gemini car Kamsha and Namcha to to be a writer, and and uh, it wasn't it was something I had to work at. But so this was like a, the the trines in the car Kamsha and Namcha chart um, show us the desired um, um, talents that we want to roll out. Um, Our Atmakarika cookbook, um, you know, what is, with, from the Atmakarika, we can determine what is the root cause of suffering in this lifetime. If it's in the ninth house, it may be connected to father. If it's in the seventh house, it may be related to marriage. Again, the Atmakarika always causes suffering because it wants us to wake up and get enlightened. So the, the, the way you have to understand the Atmakarika is it's only interested in getting us enlightened and it will cross suffering in the relative so that we get so frustrated that we turn to God and we turn to meditation. So what 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 you have to do when you're suffering from your Atmakarika is you have to get on the path and you know get initiated and get on get a guru and get meditation to kind of to kind of affirm and, and your your life purpose. Um if you have Atmakarika in the sixth house, maybe you have constant litigations or illness. In the twelfth house, constant losses or being humiliations or or expenditures or things like that. Um, um, here's again. Um, so here's, here's Elizabeth. Um, Here's the Seal Balls chart again. She had Aunt McCork in the in the fifth house. Um, her romance was a mess, constant fighting and bickering with her husband, even though they were, you know, lovers and the dream couple on television. You know, their life was far from that. In real life, she was, you know, um, her 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 son became an alcoholic. Um, and I think her husband. Was an alcoholic, so her romantic life was totally destroyed, um, you know, through the Atmakarika, Even though she was an incredible success on many levels, um, Bill Walton, um, uh, great basketball players, um, one of the greatest basketball players of all times. Um, he's got his Atmakarika in the fourth house um, now. It's interesting, as I said, Saturn out Macorica can create health issues. And um, he was like this number one pick in, you know, he, his team, which was Oregon State, maybe, I think. Um, I'm not quite sure what his team was. Um, in college basketball, he was the number one pick. And he played for the Portland Trailblazers, if I remember. And he... Um, um, he was, you know, one of the best basketball players of all time, but of I think he had 15 seasons. All in all, but maybe one or two of those, he was partially on the injured list. So it's kind of like Saturn out McCork uh, again, aspecting his tenth house here, um, again in Jaime astrology, Virgo aspects, um, Pisces. He was kind of, you know, as much as he wanted to play and as good as he was, he was always getting injured and he was never able to play um a full season he eventually went on to become a coach and now he's a television broadcaster um but his marriage life suffered so we see uh, uh saturn out mccork is in the fourth house now one of the things that we look at the fourth house for is a domestic life now if you're a star basketball player on the road your wife never sees you and she went a divorce, and the first marriage, the divorce kind of killed him on some level, and that was the suffering that the Saturn out McCork in the fourth house created. Saturn in Jaime astrology aspects the seventh house also, so aspecting more. So the first marriage was long suffering. His wife divorced him. It really kind of did a number on him, but that was part of of his his soul's karma. Um, okay. Um, I have, there's a, I have a bunch of stuff I want to show you, but um, I, I went through this already a little bit. There are these charts that you create that we're going to study in this course. Um, we have 
two hour, four hour lessons on each one of these charts. So we have the Rashi chart and the Rashi chart has Saturn at Makorka in, in, the, in the 12th house and Gemini and Abamsha, um in, you know, Vishaka Nakshatra. So all those things give us information. Um, we can create this um, in the Navamsha chart, Saturn goes into the 11th house um, with Rahu and Venus. And that we will have a lesson on the Navamsha chart um, in this class because we, we always want to look at the Navamsha chart. And then we have the the Karakumcha Navamsha chart, which is I call it the soul desire talents chart because in this case, I explained how that got derived. Saturn is in Gemini and Avamsha. The chart rotates around Gemini. Um, so I have Saturn, Rahu, and Venus in Gemini now. Um, and then there's a chart that's created where you superimpose the Rashi chart onto the Navamsha chart in a certain way, and we'll learn how to do that. And the computer models do that. We get the what's called the, the soul's purpose chart. And I often find this, it's called the Karakumcha Rashi chart. How does the soul manifest? its purpose in this lifetime. And that's a lot of what this course is about, ultimately getting to read these, these Karakamsha charts. And I showed you earlier in the class that mine's Gemini rising with Jupiter and K2 in the, in the first and Mercury in the ninth. Now, would we see that, can we see that in the, in the Rashi chart? No, if I were trying to do life purpose from the Rashi chart, which I do sometimes, I kind of see, okay, Chart Lord Mars is in the sixth house, aspected by Saturn, something to do with healing um, or being some type of, of a service warrior or something like that. And I and I dropped out of pre-med um, often Mars, and a friend of mine has Scorpio with Mars and Aries, and he doesn't have the exalted Saturn aspecting it, and he became a medical doctor. I dropped out of pre-med. Um, but, but, you know, sometimes, um, um, you know, the interesting thing about this class is um, many times people's purpose is blocked. Um, I have a friend who, um, and, and the, what we have to learn in this class to do is analyze the relationships between all these charts to see if the life purpose is blocked and, and um, or how do we unblock the life purpose or how do we block unblock the karma so you know i've given you some interesting pieces here but the fascinating thing about the class is um learning you know i've just been doing this for 10 years is how do you analyze all these charts and their relationships which is like reading a three-dimensional chess game to see how everything's interacting and what's blocking what and um in my chart for example um the, the Navamsha Lord's in the 12th house, um, which can be somewhat of a block. Um, there's an eight relationship between the Rashi chart and the Karakamsha Navamsha chart. So there's, you know, that's, there's some type of a block there. Um, the Karakam, you know, so um, um, the good news is, is that we like the sun and the moon or the moon aspecting the Lord of the Karakamsha Rashi chart. So in my case, in Jaime astrology, the sun, which is this, you know, really represents the soul uh, on another level, is in um, Pisces aspects of Gemini. So the sun in aspecting um, my soul purpose chart is allowing my soul's purpose to, to manifest fully. And it did. I did become a spiritual teacher. I became a Jyotish teacher. I became, um, you know, I'm actually now a teacher that wants to help people get enlightened um and those are things that are all in this chart jupiter aspecting saturn out macorica so it's kind of quite of interesting so um learning how to dissect all these charts becomes kind of a you know one of the things that we have to learn in this class and, and it's very interesting um i wanted to look at some other famous saturn out macorica people um let me take some questions uh, first, I don't, so I don't want to, I don't want to go a full two hours because people kind of lose it, but, um, okay, uh, Mary. <laughs> go ahead, Alice. Hey, if just, someone has their Atmakotica, like, a 29 degrees and then like, a, you know, like 
Mars 29 degrees, but Arahu K2 at one degrees, which is the Atmakarika. Yeah, you uh, again. The, the nice thing about computer programs now is is that you know we you know in ancient times you could have a bunch of planets at 29 degrees, but now you could have planets at 29 degrees 55 minutes and 29 degrees 53 minutes and 29 degrees 51 minutes. So there's a difference. So you just have to look at the one with the highest number of degrees in seconds. So the highest it, second also. Yeah, we have to look at the highest number of degrees and seconds. So I in in this in I think in my chart, um, my mine is very close, but it's it, it's it's okay. So let's see. Do you mind? I could bring up your chart if you if if you if I have your permission, Alice. Oh yeah, I don't have it in my chart. I just have know someone who has that. So. Right. Okay. Um. So, so what you have to do is like now in my case it's not a problem, but I have I have I have three planets that are pretty close to each other. Jupiter is 2639, Saturn is 2745, the Moon is 2629. So in Jaime astrology, Saturn is clearly the highest, Jupiter is the second highest, Moon is the third highest. But you know they're pretty close, you know, and sometimes you get charts like that. But oh. because we can tell minutes and seconds we can dissect them okay. okay and you have to if your program isn't set to show the seconds i mean some people don't bother with degrees and minutes because they don't ever need them i do because there's a difference between you know it, it may put it in a different pada in the navamsha chart it may put it in a different nakshatra and it may make it a different karaka so i always include minutes and seconds okay okay Okay, thanks. Good question. Good question, Barry. Yeah. Did you say that the Karakamsha Rashi is something you look at specifically for blocks to the live purpose? Well, I I um it's not exactly like that. Um I I what I do is I look at all of them together and I, and this is something I teach in the class. Mm -hmm. Um this is something I've just been doing for 10 years and I I don't know if I mean, I have learned the basic principles from other teachers, but then it's really 10 years of applying them. Um, the Karakamsha chart, to me, um, is the chart that I use most to show what's your purpose on this planet, you know? Um, and um, the, its relationship to the Rashi chart and to the Navamsha chart and to the uh, Karakamsha Navamsha chart, they're... they're you know how how if there's coherence there, then the life purpose is comes out. If there's no coherence, then you see the blocks. And this is very complicated to explain in five minutes. But um, I'll give you an example. I have a friend who's Libra rising, and her Karakamsha Rashi chart is Virgo. So there's a 12 relationship between Virgo and Libra, and um there's a lot of other things that are just out of sync and she hasn't lived her life purpose and she's been suffering and she's been in the hospital a lot and it, it's almost like yeah maybe she was meant to be a counselor or whatever she was meant to be but but you know the 12 relationships and the malefics relationships between the different charts are kind of creating blocks and that it didn't manifest and she's suffering okay Mm -hmm. Okay, great. So it's not just it's not just one chart that you see the blocks in. You have to mm -hmm. see how the charts are interacting, which is why I created a special page. Um, and and this is where Virgotima comes in. If you have Virgotima uh, planets um, in in the Navamsha chart, um, it creates soul coherence. And so Virgotima planet. And, I've had James Braha say, I don't think Virgotima planets do anything. Well, he does, you know, I'm not sure he takes into account Jaime astrology. Jaime astrology, Virgotima planets allow the soul to complete its mission because there's coherence between the different charts. Great. Thank you. I don't know if everybody followed that, but anyway. Um, no, that now, was people, cool. okay, Thank you. People who um, are, I, my, my students have, ability to turn on the mic. Let me turn on the mic for the rest of the people in the class to see if you have questions. So Jan and Jennifer and Sherry and Maria, um, 
Jan has a question. So let me unmute you. Um, and I don't, so I just unmuted everybody. Jan, your mic is live. Please go ahead. Yes, hi, Mary. Uh, thank you for this. It's wonderful. Um, my question is, I've understood if the Amachikarika and the Atmakarika have the same degree. Of course, they're going to have different minutes, but I thought one overtook the other. Like the Amachikarika then yeah, would be the Atmakarika. Right. There is a very advanced principle, and it's amazing that you know it. Um, so that's great. Um, it can be that later in life that the Amachikarika can overtake the Atmakarika and, and switch it out. It's a very advanced principle. It may happen in, in during, you know, like I say, if you have like a Saturn, if Saturn and Jupiter at the same degree and they're just a few minutes apart, um, maybe you go into your Jupiter period, the Jupiter, um, uh, you know, Jupiter may overtake the Atmakarika. Yeah, so that, yeah, that can happen later in life. It particularly could happen in a, in, a, in a dasha period connected to it. So it would be dasha, not according to the the time span of the planet. It like, could all, there, there are a number of rules for it. In Rashi dashas, it may be that it happens because you're going into a Rashi dasha. And so let's say if you had Jupiter and Saturn at the same degree and different signs, and you go into Gemini period and Jupiter's in Gemini, then, um, uh, if you're going to a Gemini period, then Jupiter comes into focus. And so it could be during that time period that it could happen. It could also happen um, at the maturation, like you said, during the maturation of the planet. Um, you know, if you know those rules. Yeah, there, there are a bunch of advanced rules on, on, on it. Um, it is kind of a rare case, but it does happen. You know. Thank you. Good question. Um, See, the thing that I that we have to understand is that the Atmakorka lessons come out during their Dasha period. So if you, or Bukti period. So if you have Saturn Atmakorka, if you go into Saturn Major period, um, then you have major, then your Atmakorka lessons come out. If you're, if you're going to a Jupiter Saturn period, then that two year period may bring, bring out your Atmakorka lessons. Or in Rashi Dashas, in this case, like Vanessa Redgrave has, um, Saturn in Aquarius. So if she goes into an Aquarius period in, in a Rashi Dasha, then her Amakaric lessons could come out. Okay. Um, anybody else have a question um, in the, um, the people who don't have control of their mics? I have unmuted you. Terry, Maria, Jennifer, Kathy, any questions? Okay, Maria, did you have a question? You're having trouble getting on your mic. Let me unmute you. Um, I have no questions. Oh, you have no questions. Okay. Okay, great. Okay, good to, good to have you live here. Um, okay, um, so let me, um, this stuff is kind of endless. Let me talk a little bit more about Atmakorica. Um, Okay, this is kind of interesting. Um, so let's look at John McCain. Uh, people are anybody, everybody knows John McCain. He's a he's a he ran for president. He was an American politician. He died um, not too long ago. Effie, how long did he go? Ago about three or four years ago, something like that. It's like pretty recent. I think it's been a um, couple of years to right. two, two years or something. Yeah. So, an interesting chart. Aquarius rising, you know, which is about, you know, Aquarius is a very kind of political sign. It's about groups and serving, you know, you're kind of interested in humanitarian things. Notice how he's got Saturn in its own sign um, in Aquarius for the Atmakarika. Uh, uh, it's in. Um, Purna uh, Bhadrapada Nakshatra, which is a difficult nakshatra actually for for kind of nefarious things. Um, um, 
you know, like any politician, they always have, you know, we're kind of often deep karma. You know, um, Senator Matt McCorkey had a lot of deep suffering. I mean, he was a prisoner of war um, by the Japanese. Um, he was tortured. And that's the type of thing you think of Saturn out McCorka in the first house, just a lot of deep suffering, even though, and out of that deep suffering, I think he, um, you know, became a better person. Um, you know, I, I, I never really know what politicians are really like, um, but you know, he also saw his son in Leo. So again, that's kind of a politician soul. But if we look at his, um, He died in 2018, August of 2018. Okay, interesting. Um, also has Gemini, Gemini rising in the Amakork, and those he has um, Rahu and Saturn together again. Um, in the in, in these charts, but I want to look at his D10. I'm going to have to change this to D10. Um, so the Altmarkarka is Saturn. Now we can also look at it in the Varga charts. Um, he's got again in the Varga charts. We like Saturn to be. We we like planets. Uh, that are important to be in, you know, angle or trine houses or in the first house. Uh, notice how he has Saturn out Macorica in Scorpio, which is an enemy sign ruled by Mars, and it's in the sixth house of kind of struggles. And, you know, if we think about politicians, all some politicians maybe don't have lifelong struggles. I mean, I don't, I don't, I, you know, I'm not sure what we do with somebody like Nancy Pelosi. I mean, I know she just seems like she's the golden girl most of her life, but it's not like she hasn't had struggles, but um, but you can just see that McCorka in the in the career house, you know, is um, very, um, you know, it's in the sixth house here. So it's suggesting major ups and downs in career. Um, um, or the 10th house, which is important, the D10 is Jupiter. It's conjunct Rahu, and Rahu, is always the politician's signature because it's you know they're they're ultimately about power and ambition and things like that so um gemini the lord of the chart here is in the third house of kind of struggles and things like that but um no, I, the point is is that if the atma is in a difficult house or it doesn't have dignity they create a lot of ups and downs um and, and ruin that chart. And again, he he failed to become elected president. Um, he was rather controversial late, later in his life. I mean, I lived in Arizona and people loved him. And then, you know, at some point, you know, he became incredibly difficult um, uh, and 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 um, to deal with later in his life with with his um, his um, difficulties. Um, Redgrave. No, it's really interesting. Vanessa Redgrave, famous British actress. Do you remember? Do you all know Vanessa Redgrave? She she was in Woman in Love. Um, also, I mean, she was just an amazing. She's an amazing actress. Um, Leo Rising. Um, uh, again, for a star. Um, she's got Saturn out Macorica in the twelfth. You know, interesting thing about Vanessa Redgrave. I'm sorry, because you got Saturn out McCorka in the eleven in in the seventh. And like most um most Hollywood type people, actors and actresses, she she did have um ups and downs in her in her marriages and I think multiple marriages. If somebody I can't remember, I didn't have time to look it up. Um but the interesting thing is that the sign the out McCorka is in um Aquarius, which is a which is often a you know, if you know Aquarius, it's kind of a protest oriented, it's co-ruled by Saturn and Rahu. Um, and Rahu's debilitated in this chart um, in Scorpio, um, and it's the owner of her seventh house. So she would probably attract kind of crazy characters in marriage. Usually Saturn in the seventh house is good for a long marriage. Um, Yaffe, could you do me a favor and look up her marriage history? I, I forgot to look she it only up. Got married, well, she, she, got, she only got married twice. Okay. Um, 
the first time was from 1962 to 1967. So it was a uh, five year period. And then um, the uh, last one was 2006 and she's still alive. She's 19, she's 86 years old and she she's still alive. And by the way, uh, the famous movie that she played in was uh, Letters to Juliet. All right, okay. Okay, thank you for, for remembering um, the biography. But I, I remember her, I, I love British film actresses and I just always loved her, but she was a political activist. Um, and yeah, the seventh house represents first husband. Uh, Atma Korka there is gonna create problems with the first husband. So uh, second husband would be the third house. Um, that's got Mars and Libra. I, I guess that one went better. I can't, again, we don't, I don't know, look it up. Um, uh, but you know the fact that she she has this Saturn at Macorca with dignity. In some ways, she was a successful political activist. But again, after a while, people kind of run away from her because she was such a kind of a political, uh, a radical political activist. And I think that's because the cold ruler of Rahu is debilitated here, um, and so it's bringing. Um, um, if I remember correctly, I think you know in some ways. She somehow got also shunned for parts because she was such a political activist. So, and she had this strong activism energy from the Apocorica. It had dignity, but it eventually created a lot of suffering because I think it it hurt her career. Um, as well, what I'm remembering. But also we have K2 in the tenth year. Probably, I, I probably. think the the other big thing about her was that um, she had a daughter, Natasha Richardson, uh, oh, who right. died. Okay. So okay. Child. Yeah, okay. She, the daughter was married to Liam Nielsen, who's still alive. That really great, famous uh, Irish actor. Okay, that's right. Yeah, you know, she's a very, she's very amazing woman. Again, exalted Venus here, um, um, also. But, but just um, you know, in some ways, uh, a, you know, like a lot of people, we all have tumultuous lives. It's just a matter of whether we're famous and we have tumultuous lives. And sometimes if we're famous and have tumultuous lives, it's worse <laughs> because the press, like Jennifer Aniston, the press is always on top of her. Um, okay, let's... Okay, let's look at Jeff Bezos. Um, Um, so Jeff Bezos, um, kind of interesting chart. I mean, we I think we don't know his time. I've had a number of people have rectified it to Aries rising. Um, but the point is, is that um, he's got um, Saturn out Macorica in the 10th with an exalted Mars. Um, and Mars is the chart lord. Now, Again, again, one of the richest men in the world. If you, you know, if you read the history of his creation of Amazon, and you know, which was really, I, I remember from the beginning, it was a used bookstore online. And, and it's not like he made multi-millions of dollars at the beginning of his life. He had, his, he married his secretary, um, who was very devoted to him, who became his wife, who later, recently divorced him because of of, an, of, 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 of of an affair, but you know, he's completely let go of Amazon at this point. Um, but, you know, there's there's a sense of, you know, Saturn out Macorica in the 10th, creating like incredible hard work and struggle. Eventually it paid off. Again, the lessons of Saturn are always like the tortoise, slow and steady wins the race. Now, incredible yoga there with the Mars Saturn, exalted Mars conjunct the Saturn, you know, really kind of, great fame and achievement, but not probably, you know, if you were to interview him, incredibly long suffering in the process. And and certainly um, Saturn aspects his seventh house, Amakarka aspects the seventh house from Parashar astrology. So again, he eventually, he married a secretary, but again, probably a lot of pain during that divorce uh, with this. I mean, again, most people don't, most marriages don't seem to last anyway, but um, again, a probably very painful divorce. Um, Cost some multi billions of dollars, millions of dollars. Okay. Um,
Okay, we went over some of these points um, already. Uh, this is kind of interesting. Um, You know, um, this is um, uh, this is kind of advanced stuff, but this is quite fascinating. Um, so I've got the nakshatra that the Atmakorika is in. If you study the mythology of the deities of the nakshatra, you'll find that that the soul will inc incarnate in in the mythology of the right nakshatra to give it its core lessons in life. And this gets very deep. Um, and so, for example, um, I have um, my Atmakarika in Vishakapada 3, Gemini, and um, Devata is in Agni. Um, and um, it's connected to focus. Um, and it, it, it's about the it's story, um, it's, it's very connected to the story of Dronacharya, who was. Um, who wanted to become the best archer in the world um, and he studied with this uh, master um, and at some point um, he he cut off his thumb which you can imagine for, to be an archer you need a really strong thumb he cut off his thumb to give it to his guru to show his devotion and um, um, the the nakshatra story this um, uh, the shaka nakshatra is called the gateway nakshatra between the material and the spiritual worlds because it overlaps libra and scorpio libra being more material scorpio being more um spiritual and um it's also connected to agriculture and business now it's very interesting you know even though the spiritual meditation teacher that i was i I, people don't know this about me, I have a huge agricultural business um, called Prosperous Farmer, where I advise farmers when to sell their 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 chore, their crops. And this kind of just happened for me, um, probably when I turned 36, when Saturn matured. Um, but it was kind of like um, part of the Atmakorika energy um, that was kind of e evolving um connected to the nakshatra so there's a whole study you can do with uh, uh, mccork and nakshatra you know maybe i'll add a class on it i haven't i usually don't teach too much of it but it's quite it's quite fascinating um anyway i've probably talked too much i didn't want to do a full two hours so um what i wanted to do is um so um uh, I will I will open the class up to questions um, and let me just tell you um, I will send you a link if you're um, if you want to sign up for the class uh, the class is now starting starting October the 9th October the 14th will be every Saturday live from 11:30 at 11:30 to 1:30 Central Time and we're in eight or nine weeks it'll probably end it'll end before Christmas I always end up you know there's a holiday in there and you end up canceling class around Thanksgiving and then you have to add a class because you need to add more so usually I end up so this is the first official class there will probably be eight or nine additional classes um, classes are always recorded um, and topics for the course are looking at the Karakamsha chart the Karakamsha Navamsha chart the Karakamsha Rashi chart the Navamsha chart you know these other techniques some of the that I've kind of alluded to going into Amakork in detail this is part of a series um, of classes that I'm teaching about. In January, I'll, I'll continue with advanced career topics. I mean, there, there's so many aspects of career. As I pointed out at the beginning of the course, life purpose is, it may be connected to, many people think of about life purposes, how much money, uh, what, what professionally can I do to make the most money? Um, you know, I cover that in, in the advanced career class. Um, you know, to me, this is everything, you know, why are we here on the planet? What are the lessons 
we're supposed to learn how can we become a kinder, better person and get through our karmic lessons of the Atmakorika, how can we manifest our 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 soul talents to benefit the planet. So to me, this is like the deepest part of life purpose. Um, some people are interested in money and finance and what do I do in life? And I have covered that in other classes and I will have additional lessons in my other classes on them. Um, but to me, this is like the essence of, of everything. And I don't know too many people who teach this and I have had to spend many years to, to figure it out because I don't have it. I don't know too many people who teach it. Um, and I've kind of put it together through experience and, um, a few teachers that have helped me with a few core issues. Um, so um, if you're interested in the class, um, I, um, there's an early bird sign up, it's um, $295. Um, and if you need a payment plan, um, I can give you three payments on PayPal. Most people take payment plans on their own credit cards and you know they can just pay it off as they can afford to pay it off. Uh, my classes are fairly inexpensive uh, compared to people that I've had to pay $1,800 to to study some of the stuff with. So, um, you know, I, I hopefully you'll join me. Afi or any of my students, would you like to share your experience with me as a teacher? Of course, of course. Well, uh, as a teacher, I can't say enough about Barry. Um, that, uh, you know, I've been studying with Barry for seven years now, and he in addition to having so much knowledge and information about Vedic, which could, you know, you could go on a deep dive in the black hole. And there's just so much information. Um, what I like about him is that he he's prepared for all his classes. Um, he has actual world experience, so it's not all theory. Um, he does work on uh, charts and gives examples and also you, if you're in the class and you give him permission he can uh, look at your chart he's extremely em empathetic um, um, so there's a compassion and caring aspect about Barry and his personality um, he's very engaging um, he collaborates so there's not a lot of ego um, other teachers, for example, um, may be offended if you say something in class and he's a good listener. Um, he cares about your growth. Um, it's just, uh, he's incredible. I'm, I highly recommend Barry. If you haven't taken any classes with him, um, he's just one of the best teachers I've known. I've learned so much from him. Um, and I really appreciate everything about Barry. Okay. Thank you, Afia. Um, I agree, and I I second everything that Afi said because it's absolutely correct. And I totally, totally adore Barry. I love him. My husband loves him too. Um, he's an incredible, incredible astrologer, and like Afi said, he has an incredible wealth of knowledge and incredible experience. And he shares your he shares his personal experiences with you which is amazing and um and by the way barry i just wanted to share this with everybody when you were talking some time back i don't remember which classes it was but <clears throat> oh no it was when i had a reading with you and you were discussing the astro locality chart and to use a local space chart i actually saved one of my astrologer friends from moving to arizona which had a horrific line there <laughs> Because she was using the uh, the wrong astrology <laughs> chart, and I said to her, I said you should try living over here. I said this would be better for you. She goes, Oh my God! She goes, You know, I've been praying for seven days for God to send me an angel, <laughs> you know, to tell me like where should I go if I shouldn't go to Arizona? Where should I go? And I was like, You should stay to, in Jersey and go to Parsippany Hills, which is not too far from where I am. And she goes, You know what? She goes, I can't believe it. She goes, several years ago, I lived there. And she goes, I made incredible money. And she goes, I paid off all my debts. And I said to her, well, I said, my teacher Barry <laughs> taught me this. I said, because until then, I was always looking at the wrong chart. And I, then I shared um, your story with when you were living uh, in Arizona, between Arizona right. to Iowa. And she goes, oh, my God, I can't believe it. I was like, yeah, he's an absolutely amazing teacher. And if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't be able to help you out right now. <laughs> so kudos to you, Barry, and lots well, of love you. to you. Thank you. Very sweet. 
Oh, I want to add one other thing. Um, unlike some other famous astrologers that you regularly may see on YouTube or whatever on social media, Barry does not hide the ball and he teaches the correct um, predicting methods, which is incredible because sometimes when I see, you know, these really, um, and I shall not name names, uh, famous astrologers that you see, uh, some of the predictions are just so inaccurate and incorrect and when i go back using the methods and things that barry has taught me i can correctly predict things and so can barry by the way and uh i'm just so uh thankful for that i i like to share something i'm a new student of barry's and um, i've studied the vedic astrology for a few years now but i really find that learning from Barry is very, very thorough. Um, there's some things I've learned that I, I didn't learn before. And he actually is acclimates to the, the student. So the pace, whether you're beginning or intermediate or advanced, you'll be able to learn. And uh, I, you know, there's some who've been studying with Barry longer or who have more experience, but you know, you, you get what you can get. And he, if you don't understand it, there's no intimidation factor to ask him a question. He's just very, very down to earth to answer any questions that you may have. So thank you, Barry. Thank you, Alice. That's very kind. I'm very humble. <laughs> Saturday night McCorka in the 12th makes me humble. <laughs> Aspecting more. So it's both a good thing. I mean, I'm I'm not I'm not live on YouTube every day, you know, so people don't know who I am. And at the same time, yeah, I do have a lot of depth that that um, you know is kind of hidden. Anybody else have a question or want to share anything? Um, so it gives you plenty of time to get ready for this class because now it's it's starting. I'm, I'm finishing up uh, a class called on. Um, on predictive techniques and um and i'm also traveling so i decided to start um the finding your life purpose class october 14th which will give you some time to kind of get ready for it um and it will run through christmas and there'll be some time off for thanksgiving as there always is and things like that um and um again i you know my classes run about 25 dollars or or something a, a class this one's a little bit more because i been kind of um but but again i always will help you work with your budget and um, work out payment plans. And, and um, um, again, if you if you price these classes with other people, you will find that, that you know, the, I've had to pay, you know, $1,800 or $1,000 and, you know, to take sometimes sometimes to get some of the information that I share with you. For very well, I will say you definitely, you know, anybody taking his classes, you definitely get a lot more than what he's asking for financially. So you know some people are like oh my god is you know i'm spending this much money is it worth it yeah it definitely is worth it because you're getting information that you necessarily will not find through other astrologers and this information stays with you for life and he sends you you know um he sends you powerpoint slides he sends you recorded video which is great and so you could always look back and he'll always ask uh, answer any of your questions in the next class if you had something about the previous class that you missed which brings me to another point about um the atma karika what if like what remedy what remedies would you barry recommend like if someone's atma karika is in a debilitated sign yeah i mean <clears throat> you know remedies is kind of like um I, I try to come up with basic practical remedies. I mean, I, I, if, you, if you haven't taken my remedy class, but I, I feel like remedies have to be also be down to earth. I mean, a lot of people don't like, you know, remedy for mercury is, is usually like, um, you know, Vishnu. Um, yeah, um, but the, but the, but the, you know, most people don't, to me, it's kind of like Bill Murray and Groundhog Day. If 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 you have trouble with relationships, you take a relationship seminar. You know, if you learn, you, if you learn, if you need to learn how to be kind, you have to start doing service work and and work with the unfortunate people. So, um, you know, sometimes I think you, have, if the car if the car is debilitated, 
then you have to work three times as hard to to make it work and that means like you know murky out mccorica you need to go to toastmasters you know you have trouble with friends and you know you have to take dale carnegie how to win friends and influence people you have you have trouble just you know uh being immature about sexuality you've got to kind of be aware of it and just you know let it come out in a, in a different uh in a different way um you know mercury out mccorica sometimes if it's debilitated it has to kind of uh learn not to talk too much or learn how to um to to listen better and learn how to um you know, they're basic kind of communication skills and and what it boils down to sometimes is learning um you know taking you know going to toastmasters you know taking classes on how to be you know be a real people person and, and be a good listener you know so it, those are kind of core things sometimes um yeah you could you could listen to vision of Sahasranam for you know and things like that but i think it boils down to kind of like working working on the things that you're not good at you know yeah, that's it's Maybe. interesting you say that because I that's what I do with my clients. Like I I give them like practical remedies. Like I'll give them remedies that I know as far as like mantras are concerned, but then I also give them like practical idea because I figured you know this is modern age and stage, and I also deal with people you know um, that are not like familiar with uh, you know Vedic astrology and you know the Hindu religion, and you know they're not they're not they're not really open to like, you know, anything foreign. <laughs> so yeah, you, know. you do have to, you do have to, you know, try to find um, practical things. But you know, the reason I was asking was because, and it's funny you brought up Mercury. My daughter has uh, Mercury Gandanta in the 10th. She's a Gemini ascendant and, you know, it's debilitated in Pisces. And then I noticed it's also there in her D9 chart. And I said, shit, I got to really help this girl. out. <laughs> but you know, it's funny. She's a great, she's, she's talkative. She's a great talker. I don't know if she's a really good listener, but she's excellent at problem solving. And I mean, even at her age, she's only 11. I mean, she understands like the root problem and she knows how to like work with people. But at the same time, she doesn't have a lot of friends, but that's also because I homeschool her. So I don't know. It's kind of interesting to see how this all plays yeah. out for her. I mean, the thing about the Atmacarca is, it's like, those are things that we're not good at. And so we have to kind of, go the extra mile with with strengthening the karaka you know so if the alma karaka is weak we have to strengthen the karaka um you know so mercury alma karaka like i late i've been getting a lot of those lately i send them to toastmasters i send them to dale carnegie i send them to you know they just don't have a you know, they, they come to me and they don't understand why they don't have any friends or why their friends run away because they don't know how to be a good listener they don't know how to be a good friend or they don't know how to kind of the basic people skills you've got to learn and and when the albacorca is weak or something you just don't have a clue you know yeah makes That's sense quite interesting okay any final questions thoughts accolades anyway it's been totally great um if you go to my website applied vedic astrology you can always email me um uh, when you get a copy of um let's see when you go um my website applied vedic astrology if you go under new class um if you go under live webinars on the top tab that will be the top the course will be listed if you need you know um even know if this I think it's buried too some one of these emails is not working out if, if if i don't email you back i've had some problem during mercury retrograde with this email address but um you also personally email, email my google address, my other address if you need help uh, registering for the course if you have any questions if you have any needs but it's um it's been great if you have any friends to tell about the class great um Jan, always great to have you show up. For some reason, you're always waiting for you to become a student. I, I always, you always come to my live lectures. So it's always waiting. Hopefully, sometime you'll be able to, um, you know, um, study with me too. I'd love to have you. Um, okay. Um, so I will end this officially a little bit early. Um, those of you who are taking my live class on, um, it's starting at three o'clock on the same channel, and I will see you then. Um, uh, great to spend time with you this afternoon. Have a great day. Thank you, Barry. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.